Good morning. It is 11 o'clock on the nose on Monday morning. Anybody watching? How you doing? How's your morning treating you? How's your day treating you? And if you're watching this at night, how's your evening treating you? <laughs> so, I am so excited. I just went and got my ear flushed. It was only the right ear that needed flushing. Instant relief. Oh my god. This one, the one that's been popping and driving me mad, um, is not plugged, but there's fluid, like balls of fluid <laughs> that are stuck, and the cracking, the popping, is when there's like a little flap that opens and closes, so like when you're talking and stuff and so that popping is when that fluid is released uh, uh, so I guess it's kind of like when your glands here get swollen after you've been sick or when you're sick that's kind of what this is that really bad cold that I had a couple of weeks ago this is a side effect of that so, she cleaned out this one. It feels so good. Oh my God. Oh my God. But now I can tell that this one feels off. I couldn't tell before. <laughs> it was just bopping and driving me nuts. Now I can tell. It does feel, it does feel off. I can hear fine out of it. It just feels off. Like it. And uh, so she made me an appointment for Wednesday to uh, have a hearing test, I think it was. And then they'll send all that to my family doctor. And uh, my windshield, oh, I gotta fill my fluid, meh, whatever. My windshield's no wonky and I hate that. Um, so she'll send all that to my family doctor and I guess he'll decide from there if I need antibiotics or whatever the fuck. So, uh, which will be interesting because I've never actually gone in and had an appointment with him. <laughs> I avoid my, I avoid doctors like the plague. I hate it. I hate going. It's fine. I'll deal with it. We're good. If I go to the doctor, something is seriously fucking wrong. <laughs> I feel the same way about this ear place. They're super sweet. They're really, really nice. They are very, very nice. Very professional. But I hate going. <laughs> it's still a, a, a medical thing of sorts. So the last time I went, which she said was in April, it sounds about right. Um, I had let it go for a month. Okay. It got to the point where, I mean, I was turning the volume up on every, I was holding my phone right close to, you know, I could not hear. It was horrible. It was worse than being in a fishbowl. And by the time I went to this place to get it looked at and flushed, it was actually painful. It was sore. So I have since learned not to let it go that far. As soon as there's something weirdness going on with my ears, I go in and have them checked. <laughs> Don't fuck around with the ears. And uh, I said, you know, like, what's up with that? I never used to have a problem with my ears. Right? Like, I can remember when Boo Boo was little, like maybe somewhere between four and maybe six. I had, I was at work one day and my boss said to me at some point in the day, like, why are you yelling at everybody? <laughs> like, what do you mean? She's like, you're yelling at everybody. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and the next morning when I got up to go for work, I had the worst case of vertigo. It was insane. And I realized I couldn't hear anything. Like, Boo Boo had come out of his 
had come out of the bathroom and I was on my way to the bathroom and he said something to me and it was as if he was talking to me from the far end of a hall with really bad acoustics like it was just but he was literally right in front of me and I was like what <laughs> like something's wrong so I dropped him off at daycare and I went down to emerge. I was like, like, I, I, I. <sighs> and of course they checked my ears and they were like, like your ears are so plugged. We can flush them and I had to sign a waiver because it could pop your eardrum and I thought, oh fucking wonderful. And the way they do it at emerge is so fucking retarded. Don't ever go to a merge for it. Go to a hearing place. They take one of those great big plastic um, syringes, fill it with water, and shoot it in your ear. Like, what? <laughs> they had to do it several times, and then you have to lean your head over as they shoot your water full of ear, and they literally just went and got like a bucket to catch all the water and stuff and they flushed my ear out that way. Now it worked and they did not tear my eardrum, thank goodness. But I was like, are you fucking kidding me? And they had to do both ears. Like both ears were, were just packed. And it, it was madness. And so seven, six, seven months ago, when it happened again, I was like, okay, well, I guess it happens from time to time, right? Like, whatever. But then six, seven months later, it fucking happens again. I'm like, what in the fuck? Like, <laughs> you hit, you know, damn near 45 and all of a sudden, like, what? <laughs> it's so annoying. And I don't have medical benefits so it's you know all out of pocket now this time they only did the one ear so it was 30 bucks but last time it was both and it was 60 I don't have that kind of money to be thrown away on getting my ears flushed every six or seven months like come the fuck on <laughs> but I have this appointment with them on Wednesday so we'll see what comes from that it's just nice to, oh my, it just feels so much better. Oh my God. But I said to her, you know, like, what is up with that? Because like, I don't use, I do use Q-tips, but it's not like they're like digging around in my ear. I just dry the outside of my ear after a shower, right? Because I cannot stand wet ears. It drives me batshit crazy. And I said, like, could, could that be it? And she says, well, if you're not going, like, in the ear, then no. Because if you're going in the ear, then you're literally packing it in, right? It's like, okay, well, ugh, whatever. So I guess they'll do this hearing thing on Wednesday, and my doctor will decide if anything needs to be done about this. I, I have no idea. So... That was that. <sighs> oh, it's hot. Oh, and I also learned not to wear a wig when you're going to get your ear flushed. I'm so stupid. I don't know why I made that choice, but I said to her, like, I had to hold everything up. And I was like, I am so sorry. I said, I was not thinking this morning when I got up and put a wig on. Like, you know. She's like, oh, well, it looks really nice. I'm like, yeah, it'll be fucking fabulous when I leave here and it's full of water. <laughs> it wasn't. She was super good. It was, yeah, it was fine. I, yeah. Note to self, don't wear a wig when you're going to get your ears worked on. Holy shit. I love how there's a whole bunch of kids over at this hill tobogganing with their parents and stuff it's like yeah stay home or do the online schooling which I want my fucking kid in and they're not even doing it they're out here tobogganing what like these are school aged kids probably on the online learning I don't see them online learning I see them on the hill tobogganing put my fucking kid in the online classes god damn it he would be doing the work
Er, we're going to go in and talk to his principal today at 3 about all that shit. I have to phone that counseling center again. I phoned this morning at like 8.30. And the thing said that they were open from 8.30 to whenever the fuck, Monday to Friday, and they were not answering their phone. And then I totally forgot to call them back again. I got to do that. Because if I can get something in writing from them today to bring to the school for three o'clock, that would be awesome. Then we can shove it in the school board's face and tell them to eat a fucking dick. Assholes. Or the online school, whatever the fuck it is. Whoever's the gatekeeper of that shit. Fuck off. It makes me so mad. <sighs> so the sun is very very bright right now and I hope it's not yeah I don't think it matters oh well it'll be like a big halo around me ah. <laughs> I'm not sure how that's gonna read but whatever whatevs it's fine so Boo Boo ended up walking to work today. I said to him last night, the boys were horsing around in the, in the dining room, really. And I went out for a cigarette because I couldn't listen to it anymore. <laughs> I have not been doing well on my e-cigarette. I'm just, I, I have not, to be honest. It's, I do it every now and again, but it's, uh, yeah. I enjoy my cigarettes. I don't know. But I just want <coughs> I just wanted to get out of the house because the boys were horsing around and it was getting annoying, but it, it's so rare that they goof around together and whatever. So it's like, okay, fuck. You know what? As long as you don't break nothing, do your thing, but I can't listen to it anymore. Mm. And I shouted to him to boo boo when I was going outside I was like like have you decided am I am I taking you to work tomorrow because if I was his shift started at 10 30 he would have to be there for 10 o'clock because my appointment was at 10 30 and my ears are way more important to me than boo boo's job so he was like yeah no he goes it's fine I'll walk cool so I got up around 20 after 8 this morning and made myself a coffee and watched my vlog it was like an hour and a bit today <laughs> but I made it through the whole thing lately I haven't been making through making it through um, whole videos of anybody um, and I love long form content. I really do. I prefer it to 10, 15 minute videos. But my brain's been all over the place. All kinds of like, you know, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. No, nah, let's not do nothing. And so my attention span has been absolute garbage. But I made it through a whole video today, an hour and a bit today. Things are looking up. So, that was nice. And then I went upstairs and, you know, <laughs> I fell asleep with my lashes and everything on last night. So they were all crazy and weird. It, they were due to be thrown out anyway. Those things have been worn for a couple of months. <laughs> I make it worth the money, okay? So I tossed those out and redid my eyeliner and put some fresh eyelashes on and brushed my teeth and, you know, washed up a little bit and threw a wig on, made another cup of coffee, warmed up the car and went to my appointment. I feel so much better. Oh my God. I don't know what's worse, being in pain, because it didn't hurt, 
But I don't know what's worse, being in pain or being super uncomfortable. Like, I'm not sure which is worse. I mean, pain you can take something for, right? You can take a Tylenol. You can take an ibuprofen. Like, you can use a heating pad. Like, whatever. An ice pack. Whatever. Like, there are things you can do for it. I don't think there's much you can do for discomfort. You know? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, you know, I would rather have a pounding fucking headache than that dull throb. You know? <laughs> like, go big or go home. Make it worth my time. Jesus Christ. I would rather have the full-blown flu than just feel blah. You know? Like, <laughs> I don't know. feel much better now, though, but I can really feel this one now. But as long as I can hear and I'm not making my co-workers repeat themselves to me tomorrow, then it is all good. Because that was annoying for everybody. You know, I'd be like, what? They're rolling their eyes. I'm like, I know. Hey, trust and believe. Nobody is more annoyed about this than I am, okay? <laughs> like, <laughs> get over it. <laughs> Uh, so, it looks like they've taken down some more lights. I can see in my mirror here. Maybe it's the lights that were up on the on the light posts. Huh. I don't know why they just wouldn't take a day and do it all at once. Like, get it done, you know? I mean, what's today? Minus four? Yeah, it's minus four. Yesterday was minus five. I think tomorrow, my boyfriend was saying, tomorrow is supposed to be super mild, mild, like above freezing. And then the rest of the week is supposed to be like fucking snow. Like, great. I don't go outside unless I'm working this time of year anyway, so I don't give a fuck. As long as it's nice while I'm working and going from house to van, van to house, I don't care. It is fine with me. Yeah, I can really feel that now. Ooh, that is annoying. Yeah, I have to get that looked at real so Oh, fuck. <laughs> hmm. I'm trying to make it pop. <laughs> Much as it hurts and I hate it, if that's what's like draining the fluid, fucking pop away, man. Awesome. <laughs> Maybe I'll go buy some gum. Much as I loathe and despise gum. Doesn't chewing gum make your ears pop? See, now this one feels like it's going to pop. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> or is gum what they give you on planes to stop your ears from popping? I don't know. I don't remember. My brother used to have such a problem flying. His ears would pop so bad. I can remember, I think we were going to Florida. We were like little. And I think my mom had given him like, like those plastic clear cups that they used to get. I, don't, I haven't flown since I was 15, 21, 21. Um, those cups to put over each of his ears and that seemed to sort of alleviate and he was also chewing gum. I don't know. Yeah, he used to, his, yeah, he was horrible to travel with when we were younger. Not that we did a shit ton of traveling, but when we did. Oh. Yep, that heater's kicking in now. 
sure is. Whoo. Damn. And the lady, <laughs> the receptionist that brought me in at this hearing place, she was so cute. She was complimenting on my sweater. She's like, oh, I really like your sweater. I was like, thanks. I hope I have that kind of taste still when I'm your age. <laughs> like, no shade, but she was older. You know? I was like, cool. It made me happy. <laughs> Because a lot of people, like, I mean, I mean, she's a boomer, right? Like, she's a baby boomer. She's from that kind of era. <sighs> My mom was a baby boomer. And I would come over in, like, these graphic sweaters and graphic tees and whatever. And she'd be, like, rolling her eyes. And same with tattoos. I'd come over with a new tattoo. And she'd be like, fuck, like, really? I was like, hey, you know what? Between my tattoos and my piercings, anything ever happens to me, you will be able to identify me like that. <laughs> She's like, Jennifer, morbid, morbid much? Like, yep. You know, I, I'm, I'm just pointing it out. I'm just saying. <laughs> and her mother, fuck, her mother was such a bitch. I fucking hate, I hated my grandmother. I don't generally hate people. I can dislike you strongly, but I don't like to use the word hate. I hated that woman. She was, she was the devil. Oh, yeah. She was horrible. <sighs> she used to, she used to mock my clothes all the time. And <sighs> she used to call me a, what was it that she called me? She used to call me a whore. She used to call me a whore all the time. You look like a whore. Ugh. The fuck? <laughs> Nothing's hanging out. I'm covered. I am not that bitch. My shit is covered. Uh-uh. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? And I'm like, 11. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> well, yeah. According to her, we were we were all selfish and ungrateful. And we didn't, le we didn't love our mother. And we didn't respect her. And I was a whore. And <laughs> but then when she left, like, she'd come and visit. I don't know, three days a week, whatever. Too fucking long. And when she left, she'd, like, give us a hundred bucks. It's like, Really? She was a piece of work. <laughs> I mean, I have a strong dislike for, well, I had, the man's dead. I had a very strong dislike for my dad's dad. He was a, I always thought that he and my mom's mom should have been together. <laughs> And my mom's mom, my mom's dad and my dad's mom should have been together. Like they, they just fucked up. They just. Because my, well, my nan was, my dad's mom was, was a kind of a cold woman. Um, and she didn't like to be hugged. Like I would go hug her and she would like stiffen right up. <laughs> I didn't care. I went hugged her anyway. Um. And my mom's dad is top tier in my book. That man can do, could never do no wrong. I, I loved him fiercely. He was he was the father I should have had. I yeah. When he died, it was it was it was as if it was it was like my dad died. He was he was the cat's ass. He was a class act. He was a true gentleman. He was yeah. But my dad's dad was like, he wasn't a hypocrite, but he liked to sound like a hypocrite. It fucking drove me crazy. <laughs> like, okay, an example. Okay, he would make the most outlandish racist comments about everybody, about every every person on the planet didn't matter what your your skin tone was he had a racist comment for you okay <laughs> he was not a racist man he did not believe a word he said but it's like he liked he liked to sound that way 
he liked the reaction. It drove me fucking crazy. And I can remember as like a preteen, a tween, <laughs> um, like all my cousins and stuff. And even, even like his kids, his, like my, my uncles and stuff would all giggle and laugh and whatever. And you know, ho ho Ray, ha ha. And I'm sitting there like, you are a piece of work. <laughs> like, you know, but then I would watch him in social, in social situations or work situations. Cause he used to go down, they used to, he owned a jewelry business for years. And I would go down and I would watch him interact with his coworkers of, I mean, we, we were in, that was in Scarborough. So when I was growing up, Scarborough, I mean, Scarborough was kind of scummy, but you had, it was a very diverse part of Toronto. Well, Toronto's extremely diverse anyway, but you know, and he spoke to every single person that entered that, I mean, unless they were a dickwad. My grumpy didn't put up with no dickwads. I'll give him that. But everybody that walked in there, customer-wise, anybody who walked, who was working there, anybody, if you were changing the floor mats, like whatever, he treated everybody with the utmost respect, always. And he, you know, the people that came in and did things like cleaning or changing the mats or whatever. He would, at the end of the year, like the Christmas season, tip them, tip them. Like, I mean, he took care of the people that worked for him and that did jobs for him and whatever. Like, so it was so frustrating to hear him talk like this just to get a reaction. And I can remember when I was probably about 13, absolutely losing my shit with him. I can't remember what he said. I'm pretty sure it had something to do with the N-word, okay? And he, that he was calling me that. <laughs> Whatever. Because of my ear. And I don't know where it came from, but I used to have like a whole shit ton of earrings. And I wore all the... They were all dangly. I used to make my own and whatever. And it, he would just drop the n-word in reverse in in re reference to me that I guess I don't I never understood the thought process to that but I lost my ever loving mind on him <laughs> like, number one I hate that word I I two words on this planet that I will not use the c word and the n-word nope nope not gonna use it and if you use them toward me or around me, you're going to have a problem. I, I, I will say fuck, fuckity fuck, 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 fuck until the cows come home. I will not say the N word. I will not say the C word. Do not. Do not. Whether it's there's an R on the end or whether there's an A on the end, I don't care. It's the same damn thing. Blech. <laughs> I lost my mind on him and I told him he was the most ignorant sounding person for somebody as smart as he was he was the most ignorant sounding person i had ever met in my entire life and i would appreciate it greatly if he just didn't speak to me anymore and i walked away <laughs> it's like for somebody so smart you're pretty friggin' stupid yeah walked away <laughs> mic drop I'll tell you, I never heard those words again. He never spoke like that around me again. Nope. But I also, you know, stayed away from him a lot. He, he was, he was just a, yeah, he was, I mean, I called him grumpy for a reason. He was just so, he liked to poke the bear. He liked to start drama like within the family he you know I mean it was all funny to him right he'd get you all worked up and then you know walk away chuckling it's like you one day man one day <laughs> not above knocking out an elder I don't care <laughs> I just stopped talking to him 
<clears throat> I didn't go over to his place. I didn't phone him. Nothing. I was like, yeah, and we're done. It was the same thing with my mom's mom. I got to a point where I just, you know, once, once, once my papa, once her husband died, that was it. I, I had nothing to do with her. And the last time I did see her, we were all together at my mom's. It must have been around Christmas time. And my mom was really trying to get her to move here because she lived in Kitchener. Alone in, in the same apartment that they'd been in for fuck as long as I can remember. And she was trying to get her to move to um, a retirement home here in town. Not a nursing home, a retirement home. My, gr my grandmother, I mean, I hated her, but she was extremely self-sufficient. Right, right to the end. She, yeah. Um, so she'd come down for Christmas and we were all kind of gently working her about this nursing home or not nursing, for fuck's sakes, retirement home. We took her down and I mean, I've worked there. It's, it is a nice place. Um, and all that kind of stuff. And one night we were all sleeping over at my mom's and one night the three of us were sitting in the living room watching TV and chit-chatting and I would like to say that my grandmother was drunk and she may well have been. I honestly don't remember for, for <laughs> we'll say she was drunk, but <clears throat> she had, and I don't know how we got onto it, but she had the audacity to refer to Boo Boo as a bastard. I don't know where that came from. I mean, if you know what the actual definition of a bastard is, Boo Boo never fit that. His father and I were married. <laughs> so she was just being mean. And for why? I mean, at that point, the kid was like two. <laughs> I'm here to tell you, she had been riding me all night. And at some point, I looked over at my mother because my mom had made me promise to, to just let it go. Whatever she says, just let it go. Like she was 80 some odd years old, just, just let it go. Mm -hmm. So, all right, but I have a line. <laughs> well, she'd been pushing my buttons and pushing my buttons all fucking day. And she'd said to me, she'd said something to me before she made the comment about Boo Boo. And I looked over at my mom and my mom just got up and went to bed. <laughs> Left me and my brother and my grandma downstairs. Okay. To me, that was an okay, you're like, have at her, right? I'm out of it. Do you, <laughs> right? So I let that slide, but I gave my mom the look she got up and left and I don't know we just kept talking or whatever the f I don't I don't even I don't remember how it came up but she just kind of you know boo-boo that little bastard or whatever the hell and it was like instant I snapped and I stood up and my brother got up <laughs> And he got in between me and my grandma because I was like, it's on. You're dead. I, I will fight you. I'm sorry. Nope. I was ready to knock her the fuck out. <laughs> Talk about my kid that way. I don't care who you are. <laughs> so I'm barely 5'3". My grandmother was like fucking four foot something. And my brother is 6'2". Okay. He was having a real hard time holding me back. He's trying to hold my, he's got one hand on my grandmother's shoulder and he's got me, he's got one hand here on me. And he's like, no, no. <laughs> and she'd given us a check. She'd made some comment about, I don't know, when she dies or whatever. Because she talked about death all the time. She was fucking. She'd given us a check, okay. It was like 500 bucks or something like that. And then proceeded to call Boo Boo a bastard. Well, I got up to kick her ass and I was going to beat the shit out of her. I was so fucking, I just snapped. <laughs> and my brother actually had to shove me away 
So I went back, I stumbled back and I ended up in a chair and I grabbed this check out of my pocket and I ripped it up right in front of her face and I threw it at her and I said, you can't buy me. We're done. I don't want to see you. I don't want to speak to you. I don't want to know anything about you. We're done. You won't see me and you won't see your only great grandchild. See you in hell. <laughs> So mad. I did not sleep that night. I was so fucking mad. So fucking mad. I think my mom, her bedroom in that house, it was like a loft bedroom. The master bedroom was a loft bedroom up in the attic. And she had a playpen for Boo Boo. And then she had like a, I think it was a king size bed. It was either a king or a queen size bed. I can't remember. It was a big bed. And then there was a spare bedroom downstairs that my grandmother was sleeping in. And my brother was taking the couch in the dining room. So I went upstairs. And I grabbed Boo Boo out of the crib. And I got into bed with my mother. And I cuddled my little baby. <laughs> and of course, she had heard everything that I had said down there. I mean, because I was not, I was not quiet. <laughs> Was the last time I ever seen the woman. I did not give a fuck. Nope. And I think she passed away. It wasn't too long after that she passed away. She died in her sleep in the apartment. I don't think she deserved to go out that way. That's the way I'd like to go. Just in my sleep. Just go to sleep and don't ever wake up. Nice and peaceful. Nice and quiet. She did not deserve that. Nope. Nope. And then when we were... Well, when my mom was arranging the funeral... <laughs> because we were having the um, wake at the apartment. They had a, a big room where you could get together and have a party or whatever. So she asked me if I was going to the funeral. I said, are you out of your fucking mind? Do you know how disrespectful and inappropriate that would be? I fucking hated that woman. I loathed and despised the ground she walked on. I told her that I was never going to see her again. I wanted nothing to do with her. I'm not going to then turn around and go to her funeral and make it look like I give a fuck. I do not care. <laughs> I'm glad she's gone. <laughs> like, <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, no, no. She says, well, what should I tell the family? I was like, oh, I don't really care what you tell the family, but if you want to make it sound, I don't know nice or polite or whatever the fuck you just tell them i got a two-year-old <laughs> i'm not bringing to a funeral at that point i had broken up with uh had i broken up with his dog i don't even remember i must have i must have so he must have been yeah he was two going on to three so yeah i said you just tell them that i'm not bringing a two-year-old to a funeral which i wouldn't I don't think that's appropriate. And, uh, you know, I'm going to hang back at the party room and, and set shit up, which is what I did. Me and Boo Boo hung back in the, in the, at the apartment and I just, I just helped the caterers set everything up and put everything out and whatever. And, um, I stayed long enough to greet everybody and I was like, okay, well, you know, Boo Boo needs nap. Bye. <laughs> we have to the apartment. I'm like, Fuck. It's just, it's not appropriate. I didn't give a good goddamn about the woman in life. Why would I pretend to give a good goddamn in death? Like, no. And I really didn't know a lot of the people at the, like, I, I'm not close to the majority of either side of my family. So it's like, yeah, okay. Bye bye now. <laughs> like, you know, I want. I did the best I could to support my mom because, of course, my mom was devastated. It's her mother, right? And the only way I could think to help and not be disrespectful was to help with with the caterers and stuff. And then, of course, you know, make sure that everything was okay once her and and 
my brother and my aunt got back and everything and helped greet people and whatever. And then I was just like, no, nah, I, I got to get poo -poo down for a nap later, which was true. It, it was his nap time. So it's not like I was lying or anything, but it was really nice to have him there to use. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how I got onto that, but anyway. Ooh, look at that. 40 minutes. Okay, I'm going to jump, and it's getting hot as balls in here, too. So I'm going to go home and make lunches and stuff and uh, do some tidy-up stuff around the house. So anybody who happens to be watching, thank you. I appreciate you. I'm sorry if my story was depressing or offensive or whatever, but meh. <laughs> Take care of yourself and we'll talk later.